So the day I'm recording this uh, may not be the same day that I put it out, but um, it is the dog, the, excuse me, let me get my tongue together. Today is the birthday of my two girls' mother. Um, and we're no longer together. And I still want to give like a shout out because there's a lot to be said when you can watch somebody's growth and to get to certain stages in life. We're very blessed to do that. And although things didn't work out for us um, in the grand scheme of longevity and life and everything, we still had a long run. Uh, I will say that. But more importantly, it's just to see where we've progressed to the point where you can give somebody a shout out on their birthday. Um, I'm actually driving back from her house right now because our youngest drew her picture and left it at my house. So I had no problem bringing that, bring that over. Um, But co-parenting is a wonderful thing when it's done right. And when it's done with best intentions, primarily for the child, absolutely. But when you can grow to a point of mutual respect, then I think that you um, you win. You win in just better ways than just saying, well, you know, we don't actually have to just meet halfway to drop the child off, things like that. That's, to me, unless there is an extenuating circumstance uh, with a history of violence or something along those lines, let your kids see that you get along with each other. Truly, because children, we all know, are very intuitive and they're working off of, you know, things that haven't been instilled in them in the way of biases and stereotypes. They're just seeing things raw. So what you think that you're doing in the form of you know, um, disingenuous pleasantries, they see right through that. Get to the point where you get over your sourness, you get over the bitter, and you allow that you say, I'm going to make real efforts to be the best parent that I can. And the best parent that you can be is the parent that also respects and on some level still will show love towards the other parent for look i know that there's a lot of crappy things that have you know people have had to endure in the name of relationships and splits and all those things but when you got to get past the the stuff that they kept this and that was mine or you destroyed this or you tried to you told people that you got to get past that that's just growth and it's important to get past that growth um quickly and i'm not saying you have to rush your process but you can't hold on to the grudge there's a difference because a lot of times we you know we don't want to rush the growth but then we are willing to hold on to what's keeping us from growing so i hope that that part makes sense getting in the house here you got to be able to get past it And because there's such a large rate of divorce in this country and there's a large rate of single mother homes in this country, single parent homes in this country, children who have to split holidays, weekends, all that stuff in this country and around the world, I'm sure that most of you know what I'm talking about that there's a there's a bitterness because you didn't expect what was coming and i don't care if it's infidelity just irreconcilable differences it, for whatever reason when what you had came to an end you didn't go into your relationship planning for it to be that especially if you've had children together so i say all that to say and she just sent me a text uh, my my former um thanking me for bringing bringing that over um and it was no problem it was my pleasure to do that because our daughter made an effort to like she makes hand she hand makes her gifts and things like that and it would it would mean that much to me as well if she brought it over if if our daughter had forgotten it you know there at her house so um 
we get along well. We have a lot of the same talks that we had when we were together. I would say even better talks now because I think that there's something that's freeing. You can be more, I, I think you don't have to hold back in for fear of hurting somebody. We'd already gone to lengths, you know, where we probably, you know, experienced hurt, pain, uh, things like that going through the split. And unfortunately we had to go through family court for a couple of things. And I'm just grateful it turned out the way that it did. Um, I, and I think she is in the, in the long, in the long run as well. But once you've already put somebody through that, it's like if you get in an actual fist fight with somebody afterwards, there seems to be on some, t on some levels at some times, I'm sure some people are just sworn enemies after that, but sometimes you gain a respect for somebody because you've put each other through something, you know, extremely stressful, combative, things like that. So we speak now as people it, like two old warriors from opposing sides and the war is over and now we don't have to fight and we can just sit and speak and you find, you know, a lot of commonalities. You, you realize a lot of things that, you know, the other person was going through or thinking during the conflict, but you can leave the conflict behind, but you can still get to know the person. So I like it because I get to know her in a, in a new sense. This is a new person post post us. And I think she, she sees the same in me and we shared those sentiments. So it does, and it doesn't mean like there's that what if sort of factor. I don't think that that's the point. The point is you just get to move on with your lives personally, but you still get to like hold on to a piece of the past. And the, it's kind of cool because it magnifies the good things. All, like a lot of the good times that we had with uh, with us and the kids and things like that, those are all we talk about. Every once in a while, we'll come up with, you know, something from, you know, I guess what would be the dark ages when you're going through something like that. But it it's more for clarity. It's never a, well, you did this that one time. It's never that. And I think even if it if it did, it would be like more of a laugh at this point. Like, I can't believe you did that or I can't believe I did that or, you know, things like that. But now it's just more for clarity. Um, so it, it's just one of those things that it's just a good place to be in. So I wish her a happy birthday and I wish for all of you that are not at this point yet that you get to that point that you can have peace because it all comes back to peace. Find your peace, fight for your peace. And if the other person isn't willing to get there yet, maybe you can help them along because a lot of times one person is more hurt than the other. And you have to realize that if you're like, look at it as a car wreck, you may walk away with a stiff neck and they have a compound fracture of the femur. They're not just walking away from that accident, rubbing their neck, talking about what happened. They may need the jaws of life. They may need more help and they may need for you to call for help or, and maybe you feel like it's not your place to have to help them, but in the best interest of your children, help them. Help them understand that while we are not together anymore, there's no reason for the bitterness we can still get along. We can still have an amicable relationship. We should be able to laugh genuinely in front of our children together, all of us. Holidays, birthdays, gatherings should not be met with anxiety over, oh, do we got to split this day or uh, what happens if they come? Are they going to act a fool or this or that? Give it that. Give it those shots, and understand that everybody is is always maturing. So what somebody did last year or the year before may not be what they do this year. But you're if you are in that position of peace or on your way, by all means, you know, just keep imparting, keep supporting, because again, your children are half of the other person. And what you fail to realize, a lot of times people fail to realize is when people say, you know, things about the other parent, your mom, this, your dad, that you're telling that child that half of them may be not such a good person and they may not internalize that immediately, but they still love that other person. 
Now, I, I get it. Some of you are going to say, oh, my ex was abusive and the children hate over this. Okay, that's fine. A lot of times I'm speaking in just a very general sense. If yours is specifically different, I understand that. But it doesn't shoot down an entire talking point. So for those who can understand what I'm saying, have those conversations, have, be amicable, be, be adult, because the children are not the adults in the relationship. The children are not the ones who brought themselves into this world and did not ask for a lot of the things that they are going to be asked to endure. So I'm going to leave it at that. But guys, find your peace. This is just another place to find your peace. And in a lot of ways, it's a great way to increase your value in a non-financial way by strengthening relationships, being a better asset to the people around you, being a more peaceful and agreeable person to those around you, it's okay. It really is okay to let go and allow that those things be a part of your life at this point and moving forward. I'm going to leave it at that. Hopefully this finds everybody in total health of mind, body, and soul, or at least in pursuit of it. And as always, I hope that in this topic, there is an ace up your sleeve, advice, a comment, or experience, because like I said, the stats show there's, there's probably more of us that are, that are in split homes now than not. And if not, if you're still blessed to be in your, that same home, what are you doing to keep it together? Have you been close to having that split so there's, there's always perspectives to share from all angles. And as always, like, subscriptions, notifications, and shares. Shares are important as well. So guys, until the next one, peace, love, unity, solidarity.